Hello and welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. In the last episode, we did a lot of investigating around a murder that implicated our longtime rival, Miles Edgeworth. Uh, by the end of the episode, he finally acquiesced and allowed us to defend him in court. Um, so yeah, today is a trial episode, which are always really exciting, uh, and we're going to try to clear their name uh, of our rival. So let's jump right into it. Karma. That's right, Manfred von Karma. He's the best prosecutor there is. He hasn't lost a case in his 40-year career. He is a god of prosecution, right? A god. Not a single case? He'll do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. Huh. Sounds like someone else I know, Edgeworth. Huh. You don't understand. I mean, he'll really do anything. Manfred von Karma is a man to be feared. That's quite a claim coming from someone who forges evidence. He taught me what it really means to prosecute. What? Just picture a prosecutor as vicious as me, multiplied by a factor of 10. Ugh. So, was he your teacher then, Mr. Edgeworth? Something like that. And now he's trying to get you found guilty? What a creep. Oh, wait. Maybe he's planning on losing on purpose to help you out. Not a chance. He hasn't lost the ones in 40 years. 40 years. He's as ruthless as me, times 20. That's pretty ruthless. Like I said, he's a god among prosecutors. I guess that's something like Mia was to me. Speaking of Mia... Uh, Maya. Uh-huh. We could really be using Mia's help right now, don't you think? Oh. I can't. Sorry. I tried. I really tried, but I couldn't reach. You couldn't reach? I think it's because I haven't been training. My powers are weak again. Oh man. It's bad timing. I'm really sorry. I'll try my best. I hope so. What are you whispering about? Uh, it, it's nothing. Well, it's time. Let's head in. Oh boy. Alright, here we go. I feel like we'll be pretty... I, I feel like we'll be okay. Um, Edgeworth is a prosecutor himself, so he knows that he... Uh, I'm sure he can give us pointers and stuff, or he can at least like take the stand and not be incompetent. Oh, jeez. I guess that's karma. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Oh, God. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Von Karma, is the prosecution ready? Fool. Do you seriously think that I would stand here were I not completely comp completely prepared? Right, my apologies. He's even got the judge scared. Very well, your opening statement, please. Decisive evidence. A decisive witness. What else could possibly be required? Ah, uh, uh, nothing, of course. That should be fine. The prosecution may call its first witness. What's with this guy? Is he royalty or something? How am I supposed to fight against this? I called the detective in charge of this case. Detective Dick Gumshoe. Okay, Gumshoe's first. Let's see how this goes. Alright, not a bad uh, not a bad first witness. Gumshoe likes us, and he likes Edgeworth. So I doubt he'll say anything too bad. Describe the incident. Now! Uh, yes, sir. Dude, that gumshoe looks nervous. Uh, please take a look at the map. Alright, let's take a look at it. The murder happened late around Christmas Eve, around midnight. There was one boat in the very middle of the lake. There were two men on the boat. Now, there happened to be a woman camping here on the edge of the lake. Uh, so I guess that's Lada. At 12.10am, she heard two pistol shots. Then the boat started to move. It went towards the boat rental shop. Hmm... Testify to the court about the arrest, now. W w wait Mr. Von Karma? Yes. Actually, I'm the one who's supposed to be handling these proceedings. Oh god. <laughs> Wrong. There's only one thing you need to do here. You will slam down your gavel and say the word guilty. That is your role. Y yes of course. You're quite right. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> the judge and I have such an on and off relationship. Um, because sometimes he has my back, sometimes he doesn't. 
I mean, I guess that's the point of the judge, you know, that they're not supposed to be biased towards you. But like, he's good. <laughs> he's just sucking up to karma. This is not. No, he's not. Oh, jeez. All right. Uh, witness testimony. A man called into the station around 30 minutes after midnight. We headed to the scene of the crime as fast as we could. That's where we found Mr. Edgeworth. No, I didn't suspect him of anything at all. But the next morning, our body was found in the lake. So we had to arrest Mr. Edgeworth. Okay. Hmm, I see. Very well. Begin your cross-examination, attorney. Now! Okay. Let's see what we got. Man called to the station. Or right, who's that man? You received a call from a man? Ah, uh, yep. But you said the woman was camping there. She was the one who heard the two gunshots, right? Oh my god, his voice is so low. That woman and the man who called in the report are two different people, obviously. Different people? There were two witnesses. Ugh. Their testimonies were quite similar, however. Today I summoned the woman who was camping. The woman who was camping, a lot of heart. What happened next, detective? We head to the scene of the crime as we could. So we found Mr. Edgeworth. What was Mr. Edgeworth like when you saw him then? Well, from what I saw, he looked pretty relaxed. Not like a murderer at all, really. Oh yeah. Hell yeah, gumshoe. Detective, the court requires the facts, not your opinion. How many years have you been on the horse? Ooh, I like that. Facts only, detective. Hard, cold, objective facts. Yes, sir. Man, he's got a share of objections. No, I didn't suspect him of anything at all. Yeah, okay, we got it. Come on, that's good for us. Why didn't you think he was suspicious? You should know. We have a deep trusting relationship with the prosecutor. Detective, the court isn't interested in your musings. Deep, trusting, poppycock. Oh, that the finger wag is just so obnoxious. I've never heard so many flipping comments from an active detective on the force. I mean, to be honest, I think we're only cheering on Gumshoe because he's saying stuff in our favor. I would also be pretty pissed if I was in a if I was a prosecutor and the witness was making those kind of statements. Detective Gumshoe doesn't look so good. Continue now. Next morning, a body was found in the lake. Okay, okay. Did you find any clues on the body? A single bullet was recovered from the body. He was shot through the heart, fatally. Judge, here's the bullet. It didn't strike bone, so its shape is well preserved. Very well. The court accepts this bullet into evidence. So we had to arrest Mr. Edgeworth. Alright. Why is that? Well, we found the murder weapon in the boat. The murder weapon? A pistol. Detective Gumshoe. That is a vital piece of information. Please revise your testimony. Right. S sorry, Your Honor. The murder weapon we found in the boat was decisive evidence. What makes it decisive? Yeah. He has the same evil laugh as Edgeworth. There were fingerprints on the pistol found in the boat. There were clear prints from Mr. Edgeworth's right hand. Is Edgeworth going to be left-handed or something? It, it's going to be something like that. W what? Order, order. So Mr. Edgeworth's fingerprints were found on the murder weapon. Y yes, Your Honor. Judge, this is the weapon in question. Accept it into evidence. Members of the court, we now have the pistol used in the murder and the bullet found in the body. Detective. Y yes, sir. Was the bullet found in the body fired from this pistol? Uh, yes. The ballistic markings on the bullet match the pistol. Hmm. Hey, Nick. What does he mean, ballistic markings? Shocking. To imagine someone here does not know something as basic as ballistic markings. I don't, I don't think I know what ballistic markings are either. Very well, I'll explain. Actually, Judge. You do it. M me? <clears throat> Ballistic markings are like the fingerprints of a gun. 
The barrel leaves distinctive marks on each bullet it fires. You can examine these ballistic fingerprints to see which gun fired the shot. It's quite accurate. Indeed. This leads to one inevitable conclusion. The bullet found in the victim's heart was without a doubt fired from this pistol. The pistol which, as you may recall, was covered with the defendant's own fingerprints. Uh, that's a pretty good case. I don't know what we're gonna do against this one. Order, order. This is bad. This makes it look like Edgeworth did it. Well, Judge. I'd say it's almost decisive, yes. Honestly, I could declare a verdict at this point. However... You wish to hear the witness speak, no doubt. Very well. I am somewhat fatigued, so I will take a brief break. I will call my witness after the recess, which will last 10 minutes. Judge! Y yes What are you doing? A 10 minute recess, now! Just bang your flimsy gavel and get on with it, man. Oh my god. This court will take a 10 minute recess. Who's running this court anyways? Yeah, that's what kind of confuses me, because the prosecutor should be, um, the prosecutor should be, uh, the one sucking up to the judge. Or, not sucking up, but, like, you know, they should be trying to win the judge's favor. Um, it strikes me odd that the prosecutor is the one kind of potentially pissing off the judge. Edgeworth, what's going on here? Your fingerprints were on the murder weapon. Uh, hmm. And that foggy photo makes one thing clear. The only the only one who could have shot that man was that man was the person in the photo. True. Was that you in the boat? Yes, it was me. What? But you must believe me. I didn't shoot him. Th then who did? I don't know. You don't know? Weren't you right there? I heard a gunshot from very close by. Then the other man fell from the boat. I can't say why, but I thought at the same, at the time that he sh had shot himself. You you mean it was a suicide? That's the only explanation I can come up with. Huh. How am I going to convince anyone of that? Say, Maya. Huh? Wh what? Any progress with Mia? Oh, sorry. It's no good. Ugh. I know. I'm no good for anything, am I, Nick? If I can't call my sister, I might as well not be here, right? Yeah, you're useless. <laughs> oh god. No, I need you here. No, of course not. I need you here. I can see you're always trying to help out. Even if you don't actually help, it's a thought that counts, right? Uh, I don't know, Phoenix. That's kind of like a backhanded compliment, and I'm not a fan of those. It's okay, Nick. You don't have to make me feel better. Oh, jeez. Maybe we're better off selecting. <laughs> yeah, you're useless. I don't know anything about trials or defense. What's more, I'm a spirit medium who can't even contact spirits. Well, everyone has their off days. I mean, I've just been getting lucky lately. But you never know when my luck is going to run out. Really? Oh, whoa, <laughs> right. Yeah, that's not something you want to say in front of your defendant. Don't change this case any more than it already is. It's bad for my heart. Oh, so he has one. All right, we're back. Court is back in session. Mr. Von Karma, call your witness. Yes. Will Miss Lotta Hart take the stand? Lotta Hart? All right, here we go. Lotta Hart, you are a research student at a university. That I am. Good. Begin by telling us what you saw the night of the incident. And don't add anything trivial or subjective. Understand? Ooh, Lada's not a fan. Y'all need to learn some manners. Understand? Oh my god, he's so obnoxious. Alright, here we go. What you got for us, Lada? I mean, yesterday she didn't even remember that she was a witness to the murder, so I think we'll be alright. The witnesses are actually not bad this episode. It was Christmas Eve, just after midnight, I reckon. I was in my car. I heard this bang come up from the lake. When I looked out the window, I see two gents in the boat. Then there was another bang. There was an area thing on the lake by that boat. Enough. Huh? Judge. 
She helped me to take a photo of the incident. This is that photo, accepted as evidence. W well, this is a surprise. This looks like the very moment of the murder. Oh my god, I love how Lada is like, <laughs> she's like posing. <laughs> Order! I will, I will remove people from this courtroom if I do not have order immediately. As the witness testified, she looked at the lake when she heard the shot. There were no other boats on that lake. So, the man in the boat with the victim must have been the one who shot him. Yes, it was the defendant, Miles Edgeworth. Order! Order! I will have order. Well, Judge... The evidence is... decisive. I have very little doubt about this case. Very well. This court finds the defendants. But wait, your honor! I haven't cross-examined a witness yet. A cross-examination? We have photographic proof. What question can there possibly be? This photo is worth a thousand words and, all they, and they all read guilty. You lose, or... Do you claim to have found a contradiction in her testimony? Very well. If you have to, you may cross-examine the witness. You will only flounder and ask meaningless questions. You will fail to find anything. And then I will have you help. Oh, I will have you held in contempt of court. Uh, Nick, contempt, contempt of court. You know, I I guess I understand. Well, what are you gonna do? Do you really think that there is a contradiction with the facts in her testimony? Um... If there are two bangs, there needs to be a second photo. Uh, I don't, that's not really a contradiction, but I think there was. I think, yeah, I, I noticed one little thing. Well, I'm impressed, Nick. I didn't notice anything. Right. Let's take him on. Yeah. Got a bad feeling about this. Alright, subtle little Star Wars reference. I understand. I will cross-examine the witness. Very well. I pray for your sake that this isn't a waste of time. Alright, Judge. Take, like, take it easy, alright? Alright, give me something, Lada. Christmas Eve. Sure. It's in my car. Heard this bang come up from the lake. So you weren't looking at the lake at that time. Nope. I looked after I heard the noise. She said that already. I asked you to find contradictions, not leisurely chat with the witness. Ugh. I looked at the boat, two gents. I just asked if she can identify them. Could you clearly see the two men? Just look at that picture. Clear enough for you? Uh-oh. Uh, press further. Wait a second. I wasn't asking you about the photo. I was asking if you saw the two men. Uh, yeah, well, of course. The witness has testified that she saw them. There's also a photo. You'd be best, you best look elsewhere for your press's contradiction. He jumped in quick. He's definitely hiding something. There's another thing. Were you watching the very moment the shot rang out? Well, yeah, sure. You're asking meaningless questions. Meaningless. Contradictions, Mr. Wright. Not meaningless babble. Von Karma, I think I hate you. He's trying to keep me from talking to the witness. To what end? There was an area thing on the lake by that boat. So why were you... Why are you taking pictures of the lake then? Are you sure about that? Yeah, as sure as a country gal can be. That sounds pretty sure. How come you're so sure? Well, heck, I scanned the whole lake. Scanned the whole lake? It almost sounds like she was more interested in the lake than the boat. Miss Hart, you... Mr. Wright, the witness has answered the question in full. No need for further questions. Objection sustained. Sus 
sustained. Oh, jeez. What am I supposed to do now? There weren't any contradictions in there. Maya's really taking this hard. Alright. Alright, I'm fishy on the camera because there should be two pictures, not just this one if there are two shots. Um, it's... Oh! Yeah, I, I think Gordy might be the thing that she was looking at the lake for. Fight three times, actually, so there should be three photographs. Uh, I don't know if this is the right piece of evidence to present, but it says it fired three times, but she only reports two. Let's present it. No. You can tell, um, when it's the wrong evidence because the music keeps going. <laughs> okay, that wasn't the right one. There's another bang. Uh... Let's try this. That didn't work either. Um, I think let's follow the lake lead then. And this is not good, because... Um... Mm. Maybe this? Damn it. There was an area thing. Maybe we just present the camera here? No. Damn it. Okay, um, there's an area thing on that lake for that boat. further. Miss Hart, could you be more specific about your research? What does the witness's motive in camping by the lake have anything to do with the case? The answer is nothing. I object to this line of questioning. Objection sustained. Oh, jeez. Thanks for nothing, Your Honor. Enough. I think we've all heard what we need to hear, Mr. Wright. It seems you are unable to find a contradiction in the testimony worth noting. You keep your prom- Wait, was this scripted? Oh, that's lame. Mr. Wright, I'm afraid that I have to penalize any further outbursts by holding you in contempt of court. And if that happens, you have to leave the courtroom immediately. Understood? Uh-huh. Nick. A lot of testimony is fishy, Nick. Real fishy. I, I know what you mean, but if I can't say anything, what can I do? I believe we've covered the evidence sufficiently to make a decision. Then pass your judgment. Very well. Mr. Miles Edgeworth, please take the stand. Who is that? Wh who was that? Whoa, wait, what? Maya? Is something wrong? Do you need to use the facilities? No, I do not. Lot of heart, your testimony stinks. It's unclear whether you were actually looking at the lake. It's highly doubtful that you actually saw Mr. Edgeworth. Tell us the truth. This is a matter of life or death. Lada, did you really clearly see Mr. Edgeworth that night? Did you see him fire the pistol? You will stand down. The court does not acknowledge the defense's outbursts. Answer me, Lada. What's the big idea treating me like some kind of criminal? I saw him, I swear it. I saw Edgeworth. Enough. Judge, declare the defense in contempt of court. Y yes of course. I'm sorry, but you were warned. Guard, escort Mr. Wright out of- Whoa! Wait, what? What the hell? Wait. I was the one who made the outburst, Your Honor. Nick is innocent. Ha! Huh. What's the difference? 
all that remains is for the guilty verdict to be declared. Isn't that right, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. Did you hear what Miss Hart just said? She said she clearly saw Mr. Edgeworth. That was not in the testimony. That changes her testimony, and I have a right to cross-examine her again. Order, order. Your contempt of court is too late for wild claims. Judge, sustain my objection. I'm sorry, Mr. Von Karma, but I cannot. Hell yeah. What? Miss Lotta Hart has made a new testimony. The defense does have a right to cross-examine her again. I'm actually I'm not sure if it works that way, because if they were found in contempt of court before Lada made the new testimony... Oh, but the judge didn't actually rule that they were in contempt of court, so I think it's okay. No, I am. If you're going to arrest someone, arrest me. Mm. Very well. <laughs> Put her behind bars. <laughs> what? My Faye, you will leave the courtroom immediately. Nick, I did what I could. You have to do the rest. Good luck. Yeah, Maya is today's MVP. <laughs> I care not for this melodrama. Listen well, Mr. Wright. I do not tolerate badgering of my witnesses. We're running out of time. We better find a contradiction in here or else. Mr. Wright, begin your cross-examination. Do we only have one point left? Uh, cause I don't, I don't know if I can find a contradiction with only one, uh, safety- Ah, oh, crap. <laughs> I saw it as clear as day. The man on the boat was Mr. Edgeworth. That's it? Uh oh, I don't know if I can find anything in that. I can't squander my efforts either. Alright. Well, what about the other man? You cannot expect to be allowed to blithely ignore your promise, Mr. Wright. I believe you claim there was a contradiction in the witness's testimony. Well, find it. If you can. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait what? Ah, oh, God. Ah, oh, my God. Alright, uh... I didn't... Jeez, I didn't know that they would penalize me for press... For pressing the witness. To be held pending trial at a higher court within a month from today's date. Dang it. Alright. Um, so we lost the case. Um, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to go back to where we were. Alright, we're back. Um, with a full health bar this time. Uh, so we can... Uh, we can afford to take a few risks. I saw it as clear as day. The man on that boat was Mr. Edgeworth. So we can't press her. Uh, we got to find a contradiction here. I saw her as clear. I saw it as clear as day, but this photo is foggy AF. There we go. Gotcha. Got you, Miss Hart. Finally. What? What? You got what? Look at this photograph. The photo I took. The very same. There's something I want you to see in this photo. It's quite clearly visible. The fog, Miss Hart. This picture was taken with professional, high-quality film, correct? Yet even it could not capture the faces of the men on the boat. Yet you claim you saw Mr. Edgeworth. How? Mr. Wright has a point. That's why I told her not to say that in her testimony. Police. Yet now she has said it, Mr. Von Karma. How could you possibly see Mr. Edgeworth? Explain yourself. Miss Hart. Could you see the defendant that night? Of course. I said I could, and I meant I could. Then please testify as to the circumstances of your sighting. I did it. I finally found a hole in Von Karma's carefully vague testimony. Well, it was, le it was less so, you know, us beating him, uh, more so her just not following his instructions. So I'm not sure how much pride we can take in that one. You're right. It was a cold night and the fog was thick as grits. I never had grits before. I always wanted to try them. So once I finished, I was finished setting up my camera, I got back in my car. Still, I brought my binoculars with me. When I heard that noise out in the lake, I looked with my binoculars. See? No problem. Alright. Hmm. Very ease binoculars. Very well. You may begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. 
This one better be good. That's actually a pretty good defense. Um, all right, let's see. It's cold nights. The mist was thick as grits. So once I finished setting up my camera, I got back in the car. Brought binoculars. Binoculars? Yeah, binoculars. Yesterday you mentioned that you were look you were out looking for shooting stars, correct? Well, yeah. Wouldn't you need a telescope, not binoculars, for that? I've got doubts about your camera, too. Was that really to take pictures of meteor showers? The camera is irrelevant to the case. You can't say that for certain. Hmm. Mr. Hart, is the camera really relevant to the case? If you believe it is, you may continue with the line of questioning. But know this. If you find nothing with this, there will be consequences. Uh, yeah. Press further. The camera is of utmost importance, Your Honor. It is perhaps the key to this entire case. Therefore, I will continue my line of questioning. Wow. Maybe I went a little overboard there. Very well. Miss Hart, you will testify to the court about the camera. Yeah, yeah, I hear ya. The camera was set up to take pictures of the meteor shower. When I heard that noise out in the lake, I looked at my binoculars. Okay, let's press her in the new testimony. Miss Hart, what made you choose that lake to photograph meteors? You know the fog gets thick on that lake. It's not very suited for stargazing. Yeah, well, you see, I... I guess I wasn't thinking too straight. Mr. Wright, I will not have you badgering my witness because of her challenged intellect. Oh my god. Now wait a minute. Continue your testimony. You were saying how it was that you saw Mr. Edgeworth. No unnecessary comments, please. Okay, she didn't uh, really didn't give us much. Even binoculars can't see through fog. But you say you clearly saw him. I did, yeah. Enough. There is no room for doubt in her testimony. She sounded pretty doubtful to me, but I have to find a clear contradiction first. I don't care how many von karmic objections I get. I'm gonna find a hole in this testimony if it's the last thing I do. It's a cold night. <laughs> Nobody loves me. Oh my god. Got back my car. Your camera? Yeah. It's got an automatic. Ooh. He didn't want us he didn't want her talking about the automatic camera. And he's pretty defensive about the camera. I, I think it is um I think that's the evidence that we're supposed to be showing. Wait. If it was how to take pictures of a meteor shower, why did it set to automatically take pictures when a loud noise is detected? Unless, like, these meteors are, like, hitting the Earth and, like, like causing an apocalypse. I think... I think she's looking for something else. Nice. You were photographing shooting stars? That's a lie. S says who? I saw the camera you set up yesterday. It was pointed directly at the lake. You have to point a camera upwards to take photos of the stars, Miss Hart. Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? The witness was not in the lake to photograph shooting stars, Your Honor. W well then, what exactly was she photographing? It's gotta be Gordy. Miss Hart, this is what you're trying to photograph. What's this? A newspaper article? Gordy. Ah, the sighting at Gord Lake. Well, Miss Hart, I never heard of no lake monster. You got proof or something? Let's see you prove that I was down at the lake trying to photograph this Gordy. Um. I don't think I have evidence. Maybe the lake photo? I have it. Proof. Uh, maybe the camera again? I don't... <laughs> I guess. The proof, Miss Hart, is your own camera. 
Your camera was set to take photos in response to loud noises, correct? Thus, this photograph here, taken when the gun fired on the lake. And here, this article about Gordy. According to this article, Gordy made a loud noise when it emerged. Well, you were trying to photograph Gordy, weren't you? That's why you had your camera set to respond to loud noises. Nice. Wait, but what does this change about our case? She can say that she was photographing Gordy, but still get the, fi the picture of the murderer. I too thought it was a little strange. Well, Miss Hart, you were camping there to try to take a photo of Gordy, weren't you? Yeah, not bad. Are all your lawyers that smart? So smart, so smart, boy. I was down trying. I was down there trying to photograph Gordy. You got me. So what? That don't change what I saw, does it? Exactly. What you just used, what you just used several precious minutes of our time to prove, is nothing more than, than that the witness is an idiot who thinks monsters exist. Hey. But as she so succul, succinctly said, <laughs> I almost said succulently, <laughs> succinctly said. So what? It changes nothing. Not true. You're hiding the whole thing about Gordy for some reason. I know it. But, but, but what could it have been? Whatever it is, I'm getting to the bottom of this. Miss Hart, why did you hide the fact that you were searching for Gordy from the court? Please revise your testimony. Something will change. It has to. And I'm going to spot it. Alright, here we go. A lot of new testimony. <laughs> Actually, I'm not a student. I'm not a research student at a university. I'm an investigative photographer. Imagine what, what a scoop it'd be if I got a picture of that monster. That's why I was camping out by the lake. But that's all I was hiding. When I heard the bang, I looked, right, I looked right straight out at the lake. There wasn't much else to look at, so I just watched the boat the whole time. Then I saw a flash near one of the men's hands, and I heard another gunshot. I was looking right at the boat the whole time, crossed my heart, and hoped to fry. Okay. How do you... How do you object to that? The witness' testimony is unchanged from before. Whether, whether she is a research student or a photographer has no bearing on this case. There is no need to waste more of our time with another pointless cross-examination. I claim the defense's right to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. Von Karmus opted something. I know it. He doesn't want me to cross-examine her because... Why? Is there a contradiction? Very well. You may begin the cross-examination. You seem sure of yourself, so you must have something in mind. Ha! <laughs> that would be a first. You understand this is your last chance at a cross-examination, Mr. Wright. If there is no problem with the testimony this time, we will let the witness leave. I will announce my verdict at that time, Mr. Wright. Understood? Yeah. Alright, let's find something... contradictory. Yeah, why did she hide that from us? A UFO. Oh, UFO. <laughs> a UFO? You know, an unidentified flying object? A UFO. That's what I had as a sort of, revel sort of a revelation. I knew I should become an investigative photographer. I see. Kind of a shaky basis for a career. Well, I mean, why did you become an attorney, Ace uh, Phoenix? I almost called him Ace Wright. I was camping up by the lake. It's all I was hiding. I heard the bang of the first right at the lake. Huh. Was there nothing on the lake but the boat at that time? Huh? Wait, so you're thinking maybe he was shot from some other place? I don't think so, no. The lake was smooth as glass and no one was on the shore either. That's why you're camping on the lake. Oh, I was hiding. Why did you hide in the first place? I think it's time you told us why you felt you had to hide the true purpose of the lake. Your true purpose at the lake. Heck, if work got out what I was up to, the lake be swarming with competitors. Competitors? Yeah, second right starter bugs trying to steal my scoop. Ah, not the only reason you were hiding the truth? 
Uh, well, actually... <laughs> huh. Mr. Wright, I'll not have you asking questions with no relevance to this case. That's totally relevant to the case. What? What do you say, Von Karma? I know you told her to keep quiet. And we're going to find out what he told her to keep quiet about. She said it sounded a lot sharper. There wasn't much else to look at. Yep. I don't know. If she heard a bang and she thought Gordy was out there, I kind of doubt she'd waste time in any time looking at a boat. Definitely suspicious. Maybe it's time for some evidence. Wasn't much else. Uh, maybe a Gordy article? Yeah, nice. Miss Hart, were you really looking at that boat? It was the only thing out there. Any normal person would be looking at it. I agree, any normal person would. But you are far from normal. Oh, come on, Phoenix. You're better than. <laughs> You're better than insults like that. You were camping at the lake trying to take a picture of Gordy. Think about it. What would you do if you heard a loud noise? You'd be scanning the lake for any sign of Gordy, that's what. You wouldn't give the boat a second thought. Nice. Order. Continue, Mr. Wright. You testified that you were watching the boat through binoculars. However, you wouldn't need binoculars to watch that boat. You needed them to search for Gordy, and that's what you were doing. Well? Well, now that y'all mention it, I did sort of take my binoculars and kind of scan the lake a bit. I mean, Gordy might be out there and all. But, Miss Hart, are you saying that you are not watching the boat then? S sorry, y'all. I wasn't fibbing, really. I was just... I thought I could, you know, be the witness to a murder and all. I kind of got excited. I was sure I was watching that boat till now. This... this is totally uncalled for. But, but hey, you got the photo, you got the proof. Still, we can't see who is shooting who in this. Right, right. That's why I took the photo and... And what? Witness, that's enough. You had a long day. Shut your pie hole. Oh my god. What was she gonna say? She took the photo and what? Wait a second. She even had a photograph to prove it. But you really can't tell who from the photo who is shooting. That's why she said she's going to enlarge the photo. She said it will drop the quality a bit, but it should let us see who's who. Interesting. Why would one karma let her show it? I've got a hunch. I bet that enlarged photo shows something bad for Von Karma. This is my chance. If I'm wrong though, it'll mean prison for Edgeworth, or worse. Make her show the enlargement, 100%. Miss Hart, look at this photograph. You enlarged this photograph, did you not? Why has that enlargement not been presented to the court? Because it does not exist. What are y'all talking about? You were the one who told me not to show in the court in the first place. Oh my god. This is why you gotta treat your witnesses nicely. What's the meaning of this, Von Karma? Miss uh, mm. Hart. Show the photo to the court. Show us the enlargement. Oh, hell yeah, I love it when the theme music kicks in. The prosecution objects to the submission of this evidence. Objection denied. The witness will show the enlargement to the court. Here it is. Uh, that's still not much better. It's the left hand! We still cannot see who is firing in this. It could be the defendant, or maybe it's not. Regardless, I'll accept this as evidence. The The fingerprint said that Edgeworth's uh, right hand was on the gun, but that photo is the left hand. And little good it has done for any of us. That's why I requested she not show it. I suppose this means that the cross-examination is over, obviously. Then I would like to close the examination of Miss the cross examination of Miss Law to Hart. And none too soon. That was a flagrant waste of my time. Mr. Von Karma, do you have anything to add? I stated everything I needed to when this trial began. Decisive evidence. A decisive witness. 
What else could possibly be required? Then I believe it is time for me to declare my verdicts. Wait, it's not supposed to go like this. There has to be a clue in this photo somewhere. This is bad, real bad. What should I do? Um, show other evidence. Wait, Your Honor, this evidence. I believe we have spent enough time talking about evidence. You never spend enough time talking about evidence in a courtroom. What? We've heard opinions on every piece of evidence but this enlargement. I see no point in retracing our steps. Uh, I, I guess we're supposed to object to the enlargement. Your Honor, there is something decisively strange with this enlargement. Mr. Wrights, you will show the court what you mean. What about this photo is strange? All right, point to the hand, baby. Here, Your Honor. The shooter, I'm not understand. What about the shooter is strange? Look at the hand holding the pistol, Your Honor. The hand. That hand directly contradicts another piece of evidence. This man's left hand does what? Oh, sorry, I thought I was Phoenix. Let me show you. I'll show you the evidence that the left hand contradicts. There it is. The evidence is clear. The man in this photograph is holding that pistol in his left hand. However, the print on the murder weapon were from Edge with his left hand, or right hand. Ergo, the man shooting the, photo the pistol in this photograph is not Mr. Edgeworth. Oh, that was a close one. Now that everyone in the courtroom has quieted down, I would like to reconvene this court of law. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. You have given us definitive proof today. We now know that it was not Mr. Edgeworth who fired the pistol that night. However, this leaves us with a rather large problem. If Mr. Edgeworth didn't do it, then who shot our victim? Precisely. As we have seen, there were no other people in the lake that night. Who but the defendant could have shot the victim? Miss Hart, <laughs> she sniped him from the shores. Larry. The victim? There's only one explanation remaining. The man who shot the victim was none other than the victim himself. Order, order. So, you are saying that the victim committed suicide? Yes, Your Honor. I can think of no other explanation. Indeed, that does seem to be the only remaining option. I'm so very, very sorry, Mr. Wright. But suicide is out of the question. What? An examination of the victim's wound reveals the distance at which he was shot. The distance? The victim was clearly shot from farther than a meter away. A meter? Th that's three feet. There is no way it could have been suicide. Order, order. Mr. Von Karma, are you sure of the accuracy of your data? Of course. I had already considered the possibility of suicide, you see. Very well. Allow me to state my opinion. Considering the situation, the shooter had to be the defendant, Mr. Wah, what? However, the prints on the gun reveal that the shooter was not Mr. Edgeworth. This is a conundrum. Therefore, I would like to suspend this proceedings for this trial for the day. The court ordered the defense and the prosecutors... Pre prosecution? Jesus, I'm sorry. To further investigate this matter. Understood? Yes, Your Honor. That is all. This court is adjourned. All right, we kept Edgeworth off of death row for one more day, and I think <laughs> I think that's a win in my book. Whew, that was a close one. Hey, don't you have anything to say? No, I've yet to be declared innocent, right? Well, yeah, but what happened out there on that lake anyway? If you didn't commit suicide, then who? The shooter was about a meter away, too. What? Don't give me that look. I did not kill him. I was just kidding around. Look, I'm gonna go check on Maya. Right. What? Tell her something for me. Tell, tell her to watch what she says in court. Oh my god, is it so hard to say thank you? Oh. Yeah, would it kill you to just state how you really feel with a thanks, Edgeworth? Alright. 
I requisitioned a transcript of Wada's entire testimony. I thought it might give me some some ammunition, ammunition for the trial tomorrow. Of course, she didn't see the shooter. So the only part of her testimony that stood was the bang that she heard. Alright, to be continued, and we will pick up with that on the next episode. I'm not sure if the next episode is going to be a trial or another investigation episode, but we'll have to see. So yeah, thanks for joining me for yet another exciting trial episode. And until the next episode, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you then.